You might have seen these electric toothbrushes in the market now that take in some sort of electrical energy and they can vibrate. More commonly, you might have seen these blenders or electric choppers in the kitchen. These devices and many other such devices in our houses, like our ceiling fans, they work on a very important device that takes in electrical energy and converts it into mechanical energy, that is by rotating the objects. That device is called the DC water. That is our today's topic. Now let's have a look at this situation. If we have a magnetic field set up by two opposite poles of a pair of magnets, such that they have a uniform magnetic field between them. And now if you place a conductor in that magnetic field at 90 degrees to the magnetic field lines, and if a current begins to flow through this conductor, the moving charges that would move through the conductor would have their own magnetic field. And so the magnetic field of the moving charges and the magnetic field of the bar magnets interact with one another. And that causes a force on the electrons that are moving through the conductor. And since this force is acting upwards in this situation, the conductor would be pushed upwards. And if the direction of the current through the conductor is reversed, the force acting would be reversed as well, and the conductor would be pushed downwards. So that means whenever there's a current carrying conductor that is placed at 90 degrees to the magnetic field, a force acts on that conductor. So keeping that in mind, let's have a look at the construction and working of a DC water now. So this is a typical DC water where we have two opposite poles of a pair of magnets facing each other and that creates a uniform magnetic field. And then we have a conductor that is bent into, into the form of a rectangular loop of wire. And that rectangular loop of wire is placed between these two opposite poles. Now, one end of this rectangular wire is connected to this ring that is referred to as slit ring. And the other end is connected to the other slit ring. Ring S1 is then connected to this brush. Brush is made up of some metal that conducts the electric current that is flowing through this DC power source. So if a DC current begins to flow through this battery into this brush, and through the brush it is connected to the split ring S1, and then it travels into the coil through the side AB from A to B. So the direction of the current would be from A to B, and as the current moves to the side CD, it moves from C to D. So you could clearly see that the direction of the current in the two sides of this coil is opposite. So on the side AB, the current moves upwards, and on the side CD, the current moves downwards. And since there's a magnetic field as well, so whenever a current carrying conductor is placed in a uniform magnetic field at 90 degrees, there's a force that acts on it, and we can find the direction of the force using Fleming's left-hand rule. The sites A, B, and C, D, though, are at 90 degrees to the magnetic field. So there would be a force acting on these two sites only. Sites B, C, and A, D do not contribute because they are uh, the current through them is parallel to the magnetic field lines. So when a force acts on the site A, B, it is downwards, and on the site C, D, a force acts in the upwards direction. So we have two equal and opposite forces acting in opposite directions at two different points. So when that happens, like the case of a steering wheel, they cause a rotation. So these two forces form a couple, and hence they make this coil of fire to rotate between these two opposite poles of magnets. So that means there is electrical energy being supplied to this coil of fire and that electrical energy is being converted into mechanical energy. So any device that takes in electrical energy and converts it into mechanical energy is basically uh, working on the principle of DC water. So let's have a look at a few important points 
associated with this DC water. First of all, what is the function of these split rings? Why do you use split rings in a DC motor? So in this starting position, you'd see that the split ring S1 at the moment is in contact with the carbon brush and hence the current is flowing through this ring S1 to the side AB and it's moving from A to B. Whereas the current is moving downwards from C to D and it's moving towards the split ring S2. So as the coil rotates though, when the coil reaches its vertical position, you'd see in this position, the carbon brushes are no longer in contact with these two split rings. So in this position, there will be a current flowing through the coil of fire. So that means the current is zero. So when the current is zero, the force acting on the two sides would also be zero. So in this vertical position, no force acts on this wire. But since it has momentum already because it was rotating. So due to that momentum, the coil keeps on rota rotating and again becomes horizontal. But notice how the direction of the current would change to the two ends of the coil. So initially, the side AB had current moving through it from A to B, and the side CD had current moving through it from C to D, that is downwards. So when this coil rotates and the AB side reaches onto the other side though, now you could see the current through the AB side is not no longer moving from A to B, it is actually moving from B to A or downwards. And also on the side CD, the direction of the current has reversed. And how is that possible? It's possible only due to these split rings, the split ring or the commutator. Now the S1 commutator is attached to the, to the carbon brush on the right side and the S2 is now in contact with the carbon brush on the left hand side. So that means the commutator has basically reversed the direction of the current in the two sides of this coil of wire. And when the direction of the current reverses, actually the direction of the force acting also reverses. So previously the force acting on AB was downwards. Now the force acting on AB is upwards. And that is, that is very important because if the force was not reversed, say the initial position of the side AB was such that the force acting on side AB was downwards, and it rotated and completed one half a rotation. If the force was still downwards, the coil wouldn't complete its rotation. It would move back to its original position. So it just move half a rotation and then move back to its original position. So it won't be able to complete its rotation. So in order for the coil to complete its rotation, the direction of the force acting on this coil should reverse every half cycle. So now you could see the direction of the arrows, they, they change, they reverse. As the coil rotates, the direction of the arrows that represent the force, they reverse. And hence, the coil keeps on rotating between these two opposite poles of magnets. So that is how a DC motor would convert electrical energy into mechanical energy. And if the number of turns in the coilifier are increased, or if the magnetic field strength is increased by using a stronger magnet, the coil would rotate much faster. Now, this DC water converts electrical energy into mechanical energy. We also have another device that actually does the reverse, and it converts the mechanical energy into electrical energy, and that is called an AC generator. So if you're interested in knowing in more detail how an AC generator works, you could look up at this video that's coming up on your screen. See you in that video.